गाजे भाजे गूंजे सपनों रे ये किल कारी रे वन उपवन अभिनंदन करता छाई धका परियारी रे शक्कर भांको झांकी झांको हुई जश्न की ये तैयारी रे मन हर चारों धन पर चारों धन सुखवारों जी रे आयो रे शुभ दिन आयो
Australian Fair and for that we have little kids coming from Abhivyakti Academy to perform this and also I can see there are many other kids around here with us. This is a family function so all the kids who would like to come here on this side of stage to sing this national anthem please. Yes. I can see a few kids are coming so yes. Come on, 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 come on,
professional and you know we there's no commercial value we're not you know even uh, like paying for the amount of hours and the costume hire and everything is done so uh, for the heart and soul they put into these any performance it's just uh, I'm always uh, speechless and I and I but I do say that I think this is where the culture and the values uh, of, in, of in humanity comes in and I wish, I wish the, that, that our upcoming generation continues to do the same. And uh, I do see many, many seniors and experienced dignitaries and everyone here and all the parents, especially the way they're trying to ensure that they imbibe these values in the generation, in the upcoming generation, no matter what culture we belong to. And uh, I think carrying that on, uh, we, I'm sure uh, uh, Ruchi just acknowledged uh, the uh, traditional owners and, and I must say that I'm, I'm very proud to hear nowadays that when we pay respect to our elders, past, present, I, it's not just elders from one community, it's elders from all communities, including the ones here. So thank you and, uh, and heartfelt yeah, respect for all. And I, I, I again pray that we continue to do that and, it's, and it just doesn't stay in words. So now, thank you. And just uh, oh, and, uh, continuing that now, uh, if I, yeah, I think yeah, we can clearly say we're proud to have Uncle Shane Charles uh, amongst us. And uh, Uncle Shane Charles uh, uh, is born and bred in Shepparton uh, and uh, is a proud Yota Yota. Uh, please, uh, my, uh, uh, forgive me if I get anything wrong here. And uh, he has worked in the education, justice, and cultural heritage sectors, uh, government advisor, and most uh, recently with the city of Melbourne. Wow. Uh, he also coaches the Aboriginal Studies and Indigenous Strategies Committee at La Trobe University and is the co chair of Victoria Reconciliation. Well, amazing. Uncle Shane, could we please have you amongst us now? It's an honor. It's an honor. And uh, more than that, it's, uh, it's a blessing that Uncle Shane's been here since uh, all, I mean, nearly all day, even in the afternoon event. So what a blessing. Uncle Shane, I'll over to you and uh, yeah, I'm sure we've got more in house. Thank you. Thank you. Uncle Shane.
is patience. Then she taught me the gift of sight, the gift of connection. We have this spiritual connection to everything, like the avatar. What a few cultures around the world that have that. She told me the river flows from my veins. She also told me my heart is encased in the clay that I stand and sit on. Sovereignty hasn't been ceded in this country. We are more embarked in Victoria on conversations about a treaty, conversations about truth telling, conversations about having a voice in the Constitution. I'm a proud Yorta Yorta, Bodurong, Wurundjeri, and Maradjeri man. That blood flows from my veins. And when I go to these places on the country, I feel like I've been there before. I feel country. Some of the work I did in Melbourne Uni taking the students over a 15 year period out on the country and just being and sitting and connecting gifting them the sight to see the things you cannot see, to feel the things you cannot feel, and to hear the things you cannot. We have so much to offer. We weren't down primitive natives. We have this amazing, rich, diverse culture. One size does not fit all. My grandmother taught me that beat is the beat of country, the beat of my heart in unison. So I'm gifted to be able to acquire knowledge and in the work I've done right across governments and right across the country I've been able to get that diversity of learning and I'll learn until the day I die about who I am and where I come from. But more importantly my grandmother said it's my role to be A clever man, so to speak, in my culture. And that is to acquire the knowledge and pass that on. Because if I don't, the knowledge that I have becomes useless. I do that with my family. I do that in my workspace. Currently I live in a place called Bahama. Initiatives have changed. And in the conversations in Landon there, I hear that we have a massive operation or, or place in India, which I'm looking forward at some point to go on and have a look. But we started some programs of trust building, developing programs of cultural immersion, helping the people out, developing programs of our cultural intelligence of my culture and my people. But also that transfers across all business that we all do, the sharing of culture. Well, today we call it Invasion Day. It's called Survival Day. We have survived. The resilience of Aboriginal spirit is profound. You walk in the footsteps of my ancestors. We don't take the time out to sit on country and just be. We live this life in a rush. Immunity in your system, in your spirit. So I encourage you to connect with country. I encourage you to sit on country. And when you feel it, it's a profound thing. My culture always pay tribute to visitors and allow visitors to practice their culture in country. There's so much diversity we have, 38 tribes in Victoria. Aborigine communities across Victoria are all very unique. I took up the role of co-chair of reconciliation because I believe in it. I believe it's a vehicle that we can all change. We can build that respect. We can build the relationships. And out of that builds opportunities. To build stronger relationships and to understand each other. I never want sympathy for my people's journey. It's not about that. It's about the understanding. Mm. So, in the words of my ancestors, Womanjika. Womanjika. Depends if you talk the top level, bottom level, no level. Mm. We 
which is a welcoming. Welcome. It's, it's been amazing to be a part of, of today's events. But I always find those opportunities to stand tall and proud of who I am, where I come from, and the colour of my skin. So, Woodland Jacob, I brought my hierarchy. What did you do along? I'd like to tickle your spirit.
President Karan Singh Nandhawji to please hand over the Certificate of Appreciation to Uncle Shimi. One more. Thank you. Thanks a lot. India today morning celebrated its 73rd Republic Day function at Rajput Delhi, and we, the Indians in Australia, are celebrating it tonight together at annual receptions. Place matters, but then the sentiments supersede. And when it comes to motherland, then each heart beats. Be it Australia or India, National Day is the time to remember all the sacrifices, efforts and courage it took to build a nation. Nations which have their respective daunting past, horrifying memories for years turned into a glorifying country with hard work in present and certainly a sunny, bright future. While Australia's subjugation and colonization by the British began on 26 January, India formalized its unshackling of the 200 years of British colonization on this day. Indian anthem composed by Gurudev Ravindranath says Janagana Manal Adhinayam Jai Hai. And the Scottish composer Peter Dodds wrote the line, We have golden soil and wealth for toil. For those who work hard, they can make a fortune in this country as this is the land of dreams and opportunities for many of us. And unlike anyone else, we Indians are known for contributing in prosperity of country. Not just through our intellect, talent and hard work, but also by bringing in India's magnificent cultural heritage, Australians made ship, and India's unity in diversity has made this multicultural country a significant place to live with peace on this planet Earth. And we, the team of AISV, is committed to serve our Victorian multicultural society with active participation and contribution in advancing the need of established and new migrants, bringing their hopes and aspiration to Australia. Now I will request our AISV president, Mr. Karan Singh Nanpo, to share more about Australian Indian Victoria Society. Ladies and gentlemen, um, to borrow a phrase which was used by Honorable Scott Morrison today. Namaste and good day. I think that just about sums up the feeling of the Australian Indians. Uh, let me start by what is customary and acknowledging the traditional landholders of this land that we are on. We are privileged that we have Uncle Charles with us today to represent uh, in persona, in person, the spirit of all the people who had this land and who continue to guide us. So our thoughts for all their leaders, past, present and future, and our salute to them. We are also very honored to have Honorable Bruce Atkinson here, a great supporter of the Indian community who has always been there to help us who is the member of the Outer Eastern uh, area. Uh, the Honorable Pauline Richards, the uh, local member for Cranbourne, I, I believe. So uh, next time we can get a better funding for the, if you have it in the local area, is it something like that? Yeah. Um, the Honorable Consul General Raj Kumarji, again a very, very strong supporter of the community. In fact, I would go as far as saying the relationships between the average uh, Indian and the the local council uh, general has never been better under the investing year we have a very good job. Uh, we have our good friend Ruthai representing the uh, Victorian Multicultural Commission uh, and they have always been very good supporters. But uh, the evening today I think the credit will go to the Australian government through the uh, National Australia Day Council for helping us put this together. So I would really like a big round of applause for them, saying thank you. We, we all complain about our taxes not doing enough for us. Today is a great opportunity, our taxes at work. They've helped us celebrate this, so thank you so much. Uh, please pass on our best wishes to them. But let's just look, it's not a night for speeches and I will not, normally yeah, it's very hard for me to let go of a mic, but today I promise to make it short and sweet. 
We have an interesting history here, Australia and India celebrating the National Day together, albeit for different reasons. Uncle Shane touched on an interesting nerve. It has mixed connotations, Australia Day, for different people. So yes, for the local people, it has a different history. Uh, for the other migrants, it has a different history. Uh, India, of course, celebrates the Republic Day, which is a different history. So we have got independence in 1947, but then we finally declared ourselves a republic and made a constitution with the President of India as the head uh, a little later, which is now the Republic Day celebration. Australia, at the moment, there is some interesting debates on about the Republican issue, whether Australia should become a republic or not. I am not here to say yes or no either ways. All I do say is, if and when we do decide to go that route, I think, I hope and pray the tradition of the Australia Day is preserved in some form or the other, because I think history needs to be preserved. So we all talk about uh, India and Australia sharing more than just cricket and curries. Uh, so this Australia Day, Republic Day, which has been a great celebration for the last so many years, and I hope it continues to do so. So thank you so much for each and every one of you for joining us. The Australia and Air Society, which is the oldest Indian organization registered in Australia, registered in the 1960s when there was hardly any Indians here. We have come a long way from there today. The Indian diaspora is the largest migrant group in Victoria. And I might add, we are contributing to the economy of Victoria and Australia and to the fiber of the society in a lovely way, in a great way. So keep plugging, keep contributing, because Ruchi said something very interesting. Yes, we are, or some of us are Indian by birth, but we are Australian by choice. So. It is a great privilege to be part of two great countries. I am very proud of that. Thank you so much for joining us and helping us. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You never liked them. I don't know if you practice overnight or whatever it is, but you do well. So thank you very much. No wonder you are the president and I'm the vice president. And uh, I, don't, I never lobbied for the other position anymore. So, uh, look, moving on, he touched on it, so uh, what a beautiful uh, family of dignitaries we have now. Moving on, if I could request uh, our first guest speaker, we've got, uh, uh, as Karan mentioned, Pauline Richards here, Member of Parliament uh, uh, of Victoria for Cranbourne since 2018, and all these years, Pauline has been doing a wonderful job representing Cranbourne. So everyone here, let's uh, give a warm, warm welcome to Pauline Richards, and I believe we'll make it quick, all the speeches, but I think we all want to do it. So over to you, Pauline. Thank you. The message about the speed of the speech has been received loud and clear. Um, my oldest daughter is a teacher, and uh, she keeps on threatening to go around to the streets and suburbs of Cranbourne and ask the children how long I speak for. And I have promised her, I have made a solemn promise to my oldest daughter that I will keep any speeches where there are wonderful children here to less than two minutes. So one of you young people can be a timekeeper. And if you see a young woman who looks a little bit like me, but is only quite many years younger, could you please promise to tell her that I was really, really fast? That's my request. Um, I am so very honoured to be here and very honoured particularly to hear from Uncle Shane Charles. Um, when I woke up this morning, and I live not far from here, um, I think I might have done what you wanted us to do. Um, I thought about uh, the traditional owners of the land where I live, the Butterong people of the Kulin Nation. Um, my husband's a bird watcher, so we spend a lot of time encouraging the birds in. So I reflected on what today meant for our First Nations people and how precious it is for us to learn from our first healthcare workers, our first architects, our first teachers, and to thank elders past, present and emerging, but also recognise that today is a day of mourning. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Um, and using perhaps your advice, I read a little bit more 
about the reason that we use that phrase, always was and always will be, and I encourage you perhaps to have a look at some of the SBS sites from the last couple of days and learn a little bit about the history of that phrase and land rights and how lucky we are to have Bunurong uh, Yorta Yorta and Wurundjeri Man in our midst, so thank you very much. Um, of course, it's wonderful uh, to be here with um, uh, our Consul General. Um, uh, it's true that you are um, one of the most popular men in town, um, much more popular than um, any other politician could be, or any politician, I should say. Um, so I'm very honoured to be in your presence again um, and to experience the warmth of your company. Um, Bruce Atkinson and I uh, go back a long way, and um, I did quit earlier that I'd often walk into a room and see a seat next to Bruce and uh, make a, a quick beeline for it, because although Bruce and I come from opposite ends of the, uh, or different type uh, ends of the political spectrum, I want you to know that um, our affection and love for the community is always above politics. Always. And that... Genuine. And I hope that that is the only thing you remember to tell my daughter that I said tonight is that friendships are more important than politics. And hospitality and kindness and generosity of our diaspora communities are the most precious part of the community that I represent. So I'm very pleased always when I hear that Bruce is going to be somewhere. I think I'm nearly using up my two, two minutes just in uh, acknowledging people, but I'm very pleased to be here with Bruce always. Um, I'm very pleased to have had the opportunity to hear from our president, who's um, just escaped me, but um, uh, very pleased to have had uh, the charm of your um, uh, your insights and, um, and the hospitality that is such an important part of the diaspora community. Um, I think that um, we we spoke about the diaspora community being very well embedded in um, the, uh, the very fabric of our state. And I do want to acknowledge that at a time when we can see each other um, IRL, that's what my children tell me, in real life, um, that we have um, our clinicians and medical researchers, our doctors, our scientists to thank for the fact that we have a vaccination, we have the science to be able to respond and be together in real life. And I want to acknowledge the extraordinary work and um, again, that very fabric of the Australian community that the Indian diaspora has contributed to our academic life, our cultural life, but certainly our scientific and clinical life. So I do um, ask that you pass on uh, very much my thanks and appreciation because I know that there are many clinicians, many doctors who have really guided us in this last couple of years and so many represent um, that very important diaspora community. Um, of course, uh, we had our Vice President as well, so uh, very charming MC and I'm very pleased to um, have the time uh, to be with you tonight. Um, boy, uh, I'm very glad to have had so many hours with you today. Um, one hour is never enough, we have more and more and um, of course Mama Selva, that's very lovely always to have um, the opportunity to sit next to you. I have a new one on Sunday. So I really feel in some ways like in my um, acknowledgements and summary, I've got across the message I really wanted to give, which is um, how pleased I am to have the opportunity to celebrate Indian Republic Day, Australia Day, together. Because this is the community that I represent. This is the strength of our community, our altruism, our optimism. But I must say that there is something that I notice about the community that I represent. I have a, um, like I said, I don't live far from here, but I have this habit of Friday afternoons going to a knock It's really good for the soul. And people always ask me, um, uh, I ask them, sorry, what's important? They always tell me education and the future. So that um, having the children here today, this evening, is actually sweet because it reminds us why we do what we do. So for Bruce and I, um, and our role as parliamentarians. Um, it is about the future. Uh, it is about making sure that we have um, a really rock solid future for our children. And to have the children here with us, I equipped to first of all, it changes um, an event, it changes the way um, an event feels. But with those children in mind, and fear of my oldest daughter, I am going to uh, wrap up there and say how pleased I am to be here, how grateful I am for the hospitality of the Indian diaspora, and how honoured I am to be able to join in celebrating both Australia Day and the Indian Republic 
day on the same day. It seems very sweet and perfect to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, Maureen. And I've got two daughters. Uh, um, I'll be prepared for the service in the future. Uh, but uh, uh, it's amazing to uh, Pauline is also representing the multicultural. Uh, I've got uh, again the handsome uh, Karan. Uh, if I could just have it here, just a small acknowledgement from AISV. And uh, to that, Pauline and Karan, uh, thank you very much. And if I could also have uh, Gucci. Gucci, just a small gesture for uh, Pauline, very nicely touched on the point that. Uh, politics aside, community always comes first for someone who's always been with us in pretty much since I've been with the ISV. And uh, that, that person is Bruce Atkinson. I mean, I've seen him from while he was the president of the Legislative Assembly, the way, the way Indian community was respected, the way the Indian dignitaries were looked after uh, in the parliament. It's all thanks to Bruce Office and uh, never politics came in the picture. So again, I don't want to take too much away from Bruce. Uh, if I may just have Bruce Atkinson here, ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Atkinson. He, uh, he's the member for the Eastern Metropolitan Region, Liberal Party, and uh, a great friend of our community. Thank you. Thanks, Manjit. Manjit, you said many important things tonight already. But the one thing that I don't believe is one thing you said earlier. You said you were lost for words. <laughs> I don't believe Manager is ever lost for words. But at any rate, as Henry VIII said to each of his wives, I won't keep you very long. <laughs> To be here tonight celebrating the birthdays of global twins, India and Republic Day and Australia with Australia Day. And of course, I recognise the comments that Uncle Shane has made and that Pauline touched on as well. There's been important considerations for us going forward in terms of Australia's particular day. But nonetheless, to have these two great nations celebrating a day together is a very special thing. Particularly given so many people from India have chosen to make Australia and particularly Victoria and Melbourne their home. And have chosen to actually contribute to the advancement of this great state and to ensure that they are able to provide a terrific bridge between our state and India. A country that also, like Australia, is a country that is full of diversity in religions, in people of different backgrounds, of languages, of cultural habits and behaviours. A federation, much like Australia. An ancient civilization in India. And we envy that. But we certainly also are filled with pride at the relationship that we have in Australia with our First Nations people. A culture dating back over 60,000 years and a rich culture that we have only just really started to come to understand and to appreciate and more importantly to celebrate going forward. And we thank Uncle Shane for his contribution, not just tonight, in terms of the story and provoking our thoughts on some important issues but also his contribution as a great Victorian in so many areas over such a long time. Do you know I'm going to touch on something that is similar to what he said? And it's something that I've said at a number of citizenship ceremonies, and some of you might have heard me say this before. I stand in front of 
large crowds of people from a multicultural background. And I challenged them. I challenged them with the words, this is not your country. And of course, a lot of people sit up and take notice. I follow up and say, this is not my country. This is our country. And that is a very important perspective. Because it's a perspective that gives us a responsibility together to make this country a better place. To achieve the reconciliation with the First Nations people. And to step forward with them. Not one nor the other in front of the other but to step forward together into the future. As Pauline Richards said, and we are great friends, as Pauline Richards said, young people are so important at these events. And in fact, in multicultural events, you, you, people are more inclined to bring their families, which is a fantastic thing. You don't even mind as a speaker if they're yelling and screaming because, hey, they deserve a voice. I've been in politics a long time and one of the, actually I've already spoken longer than Henry VIII kept most of his wives. Um, I've been in politics a long time and I often say to people, you know, the filter that I use in my decision making is not about people of my age. Because for me, the die is pretty much cast. Governments can push me a bit, pull me a bit, pinch me a bit, but they're not going to dramatically change my life. But the decisions that Pauline and I make today can have a dramatic effect on our children and our grandchildren. And indeed, clearly on the people in this room who've chosen to come here and be Australians and contribute to our advancement and to the contribution that Australia might make to the global community to make for a better world. And goodness knows, with the sort of challenges we've been facing of late and continue to face, and what I see is a lack of leadership across the board, and in fact, we've got a lot of work to do. Like they might just touch, sometimes when I have school kids in, and this couple of years ago now, unfortunately, the school kids came into Parliament and I'd say to them, do you know I had this recurring nightmare that someone from outer space comes down, taps me on the shoulder and says, take me to your leader. And I think to myself, who could I possibly take them to? In a global sense. And the only person I can ever think who really was worthy of meeting somebody from outer space and, and having the sort of statesmanship, if you like, the care of a world beyond their own community, their own country, was in fact Angela Merkel at German Germany. We have a lot of work to do in rebuilding our leadership stocks across the world. We have a lot of work to do in coming together as nations to address the challenges that the world faces. And one of the really fantastic things as we step out in 2022 is that Australia and India look to be forging an even stronger relationship going forward together. And that's wonderful news. And really, you are the foundations of part of that exercise, of part of that ambition, of part of that opportunity. Thank you so much for having me to, here with you tonight with Pauline. It's fantastic to be here with Raj as the Consul General and he does do a fine job. And we haven't seen anywhere near enough of him because there haven't been as many functions of late. And you look much taller than you do on Zoom. <laughs> It's wonderful to see you and also to have the BMC obviously represented. 
Can I congratulate everybody who's been associated with today's event and bringing people together to celebrate these global twins that have so much in common and have so much opportunity going forward together. Thank you for having me. So much, Bruce. Um, I know that you have always been humble enough to say that important to you is important to me, always. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So, uh, first of all, as Bruce also has mentioned, Paulie's also, also has mentioned, being mentioned by all our guests. So, it's a time to give a big round of applause to all the parents who have got their little kids here. Please. Yeah. It's so important for our little generation kids, next generation, future of Australia, to know what the two nations have in common and how dear we are for each other. Thank you so much. Now, uh, may I please request Karen to please honor Bruce? different religion, faith and culture. From the counselling, we 
uh, will always be eager and look forward to support you in these efforts which promote our common goals of integrity, cooperation, community harmony and cohesiveness. As you all know that we are celebrating Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa, which is celebration of 75 years of India's independence. The celebrations are worldwide and will continue till August 2023. On this occasion, I thank all the organizations who are already engaged with us and invite others to celebrate it together. With this, I once again thank you all and congratulate you for celebrating this day. And let me wish each and every one of you a great success and good times. Thank you.
all the sentiments that it, it, it carries. And as a migrant uh, of a refugee background, uh, the notion of freedom uh, and the notion to prosper uh, and to look forward to uh, can sometimes be very daunting and very limited. Uh, and henceforth, uh, the Republic Day, every time we had the opportunity to celebrate the Republic Day, was something that really inspires me and that I look forward to, hoping that one day uh, people in my community could enjoy. Finally, I want to thank uh, the Australian Indian Society of Victoria, the leadership of Karanji, uh, the Vice President and the Executive Member, Santi uh, Sumit, uh, and all the volunteers who have worked behind the scene in bringing our communities together. Thank you so much uh, for bringing our communities together on such a wonderful evening. Today we acknowledge the importance of a vibrant multicultural Australia and look ahead at a shared future while welcoming the contribution made by all Victorians and Australians. As the Deputy Chair of the Victorian Multicultural Commission, I just want to share a quick reflection on uh, the contribution of our Indian communities in the past uh, two years, and it has been incredible. Uh, Mr. Karanji uh, and many other community leaders cooked thousands and thousands of uh, pre-cooked meals for those of our communities during a time. They don't know which community it's going to go to, but they're just making sure that there's no Victorians going hungry that evening. Uh, and it is, and I, I try to cook sometime, and I can tell you, and I can testify, that the cooking part is the easy thing. And when it comes to cleaning up the dishes, uh, I, it just blows my mind uh, that uh, without any complaint, everyone is working so harmoniously. Uh, Sunny Yoga, driving the van, making sure it's delivered all across Melbourne, these are the wonderful things, uh, let alone the work that India here has been doing in terms of making sure that the messaging, COVID safe messaging is translated, uh, but also that the communities, the international students from India are being looked after. So I want to commend the amazing work that you all do. Today, uh, we take the time to reflect on a journey we have traveled. The recent times that require us to unite and support one another, and the future ahead where we can celebrate together in a society that is respectful of its diversity and heritage. Despite the incredible impact on our lives in the last few years, I think we can all reflect and share our stories and journeys irrespective of our cultural heritage. There's a true importance of communities reconnecting uh, and I want to thank all our community leaders who have put in so much hours and who have gone above and beyond uh, in ensuring that our communities can take up the vaccination opportunity uh, so that we can once again reconnect as communities and get back to normal normality. The Victorian Multicultural Commission would like to extend its appreciation to all who have gone above and beyond um, and particularly the frontline workers, as Colin Richard mentioned, that many of our Indian communities uh, were critical, uh, who have been frontline workers, uh, and we want to acknowledge them and we want to show our gratitude to them this evening. Our communities have shown great resilience and commitment, and I encourage you to continue to innovate, to stay connected as a community. Thank you to all the volunteers and the performers who have really made this evening a very special one. On behalf of the Victorian Multicultural Commission, I congratulate the Australian Indian Society of Victoria for organizing this incredible event. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, we are we are actually with uh, the entree here, and Karan is going to tell you when you all can actually go and eat entree. But before that, we have our next. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So it's time for the entree, and we have 15 minutes break from here, so that we can see the program after that. I'll say something here. हमारे हिंदू लोग कहते हैं मुखे पकड़ना कीजिए लोग बाला आपने कीजिए सो खाली पेट्स की चीज़ नहीं सुनानी थी इसलिए आप लोगों को थोड़ा सा खिलाफ बता दिया सो पॉइंट आई ट्राइंग टू मेक इज़ वी डोंट इवन प्रे ऑन एन इंडियन स्टमक वी हैव टू डू यू समथिंग बिकॉज़ यू गोट अंडरस्टैंड दैट ये Ruchi will take over from here. Don't worry about this. Plenty more food to happen after this. I don't panic yet. Okay? Ruchi, take over. Thank you, Karen. Everyone is so quiet now. So, uh, we are proceeding with our uh, next guest we need to invite. And uh, tonight, the next guest is representing Victoria's non for profit organization, Indian Care, which is dedicated for the welfare of Indian communities since 2014. During the hard COVID times, the efforts and the work done by Indian Care has been commendable. And in the past two years, AISB has also done several projects in collaboration with Indian Care, serving the most vulnerable communities in Victoria. So now it's the time to welcome the President of Indian Care, Sareha Singh, to please come over and say something to us. Ms. Paul Richards, Mr. Boo Vincent, I'm Sally Hussain, the President of Indian Care. Thank you for being Australian Indian Society of Victoria for giving me this opportunity and a special thank you to Manjeet who invited me this evening. Before I talk about Indian Care, which is a collaboration with the ISP, I would like to remind you that I should have gone out to the land on which we meet tonight. Indian Care was founded in 2013 to meet the welfare needs of the Indian and the wider South Asian community in Victoria. We are a primary prevention, health intervention community, not for profit organization dedicated to working with people of Indian origin and the wider South Asian community. We provide culturally sensitive clean language service and facilitate our access to other community service organizations, collaborating with partner organizations to support people who are facing hardship, educate mainstream services about better ways to meet the needs of our community, and advocate to all levels of government for better outcomes for our people in relation to wealth and community development. Our panel projects are in relation to the violence, violence, prevention of alcohol harm, COVID-related support, and support to Indian international students. We also provide a dedicated information support and further service. As one of our community partners, we collaborated with the ISP last year and delivered two sessions to provide a better understanding about COVID vaccination to the South Asian both Indian Care and the ISP have a common organization to help the community and I look forward to the in the future. I'd like to highlight that to make a real difference in the community, we need uninterrupted funding to be currently We would like to do more for our community, so we welcome any donations, big or small, to Indian we do have a DPR status now, which means we can provide you with a receipt. And if you want more information, please come and see me. I'd like to leave you tonight with a small thought. A gentleman I met last year, and with whom I shared my passion for community work, called me a dot in the ocean. Tonight, as I look around, I see many, many dogs like myself. And if all of us, all of us, combine together and collaborate, can you imagine how we can serve the community? Thank you.
where do I start another speech this evening? Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, past, present, and the future. My brother, Uncle Shane, has just left. You know what? We have been blessed to have an Aboriginal man amongst us. What does this mean? We need to hold each other's hands, whether black, Indian, Aboriginal, Australians. If we do that, supporting each other, especially working in the community, a lot of people who are suffering domestic violence, there is a lot in the Indian community, I know, drugs and alcohol, there is a lot, and sometimes living below the poverty line. These problems can be addressed by organizations like ourselves, Afro's Care, but also community response. This man doesn't stop at all, brother Sunny to go. So let's hold each other's hands. How can we prosper well in doing community work which doesn't pay well and most of the times it's about volunteer work? It's to work with politicians. They are here. Don't let them go. Tell them your issues. Ask them that, yes, we can work together, assist us. They will point you to the right people where you can get the grants. Not only that, we have got a brother way in here, Victoria Multicultural Commission. They are there for us. Please don't stay away. Go, get his card. They are always there to help and support the people. I also wanted to thank Brother Manjit. He has told you, most of you, you know his story. I'm not here to say anything. Problems are there for every person. I was at his house up to 1 a.m. Talking to mama, talking to dad, talking to brother Manjit, and talking to brother Sandy, not forgetting the wonderful wife, Anju, who is always behind the scenes. Family is very important. I'm not here to do counseling. Whatever is happening in your lives, look after each other. Don't challenge each other, but support each other. And this event of independence, independence means celebration, which means we should celebrate in our families. Australia Day, what does that mean? Australia is a land of opportunity. You can start as a cleaner, you can do anything you will see that you are going to prosper. So let's make use of the land that we have been given. I can't go without mentioning the Consul General. You are just so gentle. Who raised you? <laughs> and your wife, how did you choose him? Choose him. Just beautiful people. So also contact the Consul General. Please, anything you want to do, work with your community leaders and the entire Indian community. And you're talking of Indian community, um, the one, the lady who was talking before. Please work hard. The African community, we have just come. We are facing massive challenges. We need support. I said before in the, my speech, if you have got jobs that African people can work, contact Brother Manjit. Contact brother uh, Sunny and the, our African people will surprise you. And brother Manjit, I'm proud of you. Continue to be a leader. You are a planet shaker. Don't let the wind knock you down because you can't do it. These people, they need you. All right? You are a strong leader. You are going to grow even stronger and stronger from this. Continue to look after your beautiful children. That's all I can say tonight. And thank you for accepting me in your family. I feel I'm Indian already. Can you see? <laughs> and actually, Mount Consul Geno is the one who dressed me today. And thank you so much. And I remember when Mindeep was introducing her, he said that beat one o'clock at night and she's always ready to help, even if it's a COVID patient. So Mama Selva, can I say on behalf of our Indian community, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, any time, if in case anyone from every Aussie care needs us, we are there too. Always ready for you. Thank you so much. This is the support we have made today. 
you to us, we to you. Always together. Thank you so much. Ah, Mama's kids are there. <laughs> so, Sunny Kuzel, are you there? Where is he? Please be here. We want to honor you too. We appreciate all your great work you are doing for the community and the multicultural community. Thank you so much, Sunny. One more. And now we would like to invite Kulbij Tan. Kulbij, please come over. We want to honor you as well, Kulbij, for all the contribution you have done for this event and beyond that. Yep. So look here. One more. Thank you so much. One more. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ivan. Thank you. You're most welcome always. Thank you, Mama. Thank you so much. And the sari is beautiful. Next time I would like to break for you if you honor me, you know, for doing that. Anyways, now is the time with our performances for tonight. There are a few little kids who are desperate to come and showcase their talent here. But before that, let's start with a singing performance. The patriotic are to come over. Oh, it's okay. Adul, please don't mind yet. Yeah. It's already so. We will start with kids' performance from uh, Abhivyakti Academy. These are the little beautiful puppets.
Thank you. 
Thank you. 
it's, um, the music is going, I don't know. Who knows that? Chilling? Please. Okay. That's the big way to run a wali garden. Okay, so you can run a wali garden.
लुट जाए और नमस्ते सभी को हम कहना चाहेंगे तो चलो वो एक गीत है उनका नाम है डिस्को डेंसा और
But this is an important one. This is for the committee members of AISV. We just honoring them. So if I could have it quickly here for the photo, please this is my little mama as well. Thank you. Pauline, if you've got a minute, good wait, please. I know you're gonna kill me for your name spell. Uh, so this is an important one. And uh, this is not just for this event, Sunil Bhai and the committee member. This is for everything that you've been contributing to AISV. Pauline, please, and boy, please, thank you. A uh, bit of round of applause for the committee members of AISV. Thank you. And uh, we just discovered we've got a singer in our committee, right? So could we have... I, I, they said, well, what an MC, what a singer. But guess what? She's also the committee member of AISV. So could I please also have Nuchi Sharma? So guests, please stay there. Could I have Nuchi Sharma? And uh, thank you all about to give it to her as normal. Thank you. A round of applause for Nuchi Sharma, please. Thank you. And uh, this is it. Yeah. This is not just for today, like I said, this is for ongoing efforts. Every day of the year, so much goes behind the scene and we're all aware of it. And uh, continuing the same thing, could I also have Santi, our beautiful Santi. I mean, look at the, all these beautiful hampers, they come to Santi. So, thank you. So, that's a round of applause for Santi. And uh, look, there are other committee okay. members who are not present yeah. at here. Okay, but there's one most important, very, very important committee member of uh, AISV. Pretty much uh, since we got AISV, we've known him, and that's Dr. Guldi Farora. And uh, he can't, he couldn't be present for all of his family event. But could we, could I acknowledge that Dr. Guldi Farora has been a pillar for? Uh, who is that for? Oh great. So uh, Karan, Karan will, uh, as a president, will accept it on behalf of the chairperson, Dr. Budhi Parora. And we all know Dr. Budhi Parora so well, how much he's done for the community. But just a round of applause for Dr. Budhi Parora for looking after AISP till this new committee is supported in. So this, this uh, pretty much ends my formalities and over to our singer, come and see Ruchi. One more. Thank you. Oh, 